Okay, I'm going to demonstrate some methods that I've used to fix some broken AVI video files. I'm re-recording this audio as the audio didn't turn out with the video. So these videos that, uh, to create this broken video, I used a popular screen recording utility free software called Cam Studio. And what I did is while I was recording the video, I stopped it prematurely so it couldn't finish writing. And as you can see, it's a Windows Media Player is unable to open it, and also VLC Media Player is unopened, unable to play the file. So we have our, our broken video. What we're going to need to fix this video is a reference video file, reference AVI. A reference AVI is a video with the same same specs as the broken one, has the same resolution, the same frame rate, same compression. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what else you need, but what I did was I reopened Cam Studio and I just made a little recording of my screen with the same settings and uh, closed it out properly so it made a working AVI video file. And we'll be able to see here as soon as I open this this uh, reference video that it is in fact a working video file. Okay, what's happening here is the bro what happened was when I when I created this broken video by shutting it down prematurely, it was unable to write um, some of the some of the headers, and this can happen in different situations. The um, the AVI headers don't get written correctly, and the and the video ends up unplayable. This reference AVI has the has the correct headers in it, so what we need to do is transfer those headers over to our broken video to make it play. So what I'm going to do is show you some some popular free software that is used for fixing video files. And I'm going to show you that in, in this particular case, this software isn't going to be able to fix this broken video all, all by itself. We're going to need to do something else. The first piece of software that I want to show you is called Virtual Dub. We're going to open this video in Virtual Dub and we're going to see that it is unable to open it. we go back and ask for the extended options, uh, still the same problem. Virtual Dub is unable to open this broken video file, so we're not going to be able to fix it with just Virtual Dub. The next piece of software I want to show you is AVI Demux. It's a lot like Virtual Dub, but it's, but it's cross-platform. It's, it's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try to open this broken video in AVI Demux. And AVI Demux thinks that this is an MPEG-2 file, which it is not. We're going to go ahead and try to open it as an MPEG-2 and, and see what happens. Here it creates an M index for the MPEG-2. Okay, we see an error, can't determine aspect ratio, and it failed. Creates a little index file. We'll delete that. Okay, so we're gonna we see that AVI Demux is not gonna be able to fix this video on its own. Another cross-platform piece of software that I keep hearing about is DivFix Plus Plus. Seems to be a pretty good piece of of, of software. Um, I've seen a, quite a few videos on YouTube demonstrating this this program for fixing AVI files. Uh, in this case, we're gonna see. That uh, that it's not going to be able to fix this program on, or this video on its own. So if we go ahead and open the video, check it for errors, we'll see input file is not an AVI file, so it doesn't recognize it as a valid AVI video. Go ahead and hit fix, and we'll see the same error. AVI is input is not a valid AVI. Okay, so DivFix++ is not going to be able to fix this this particular video on its own. The next couple pieces of software I want to show are um, some command line tools. Uh, so we'll have to go to our command line to run these. And these are also 
cross-platform. Um, I know they work for Windows or Linux, and there's probably some ports for for Apple as well. So the first one I want to show you is M Encoder. M Encoder comes with a um, program called M Player. Okay, so our input file is the broken AVI. We're going to use the IDX flag that just tells um, M Encoder to re-index the video and I tell it to to copy the video stream and copy the audio stream and we'll call it fix mencoder.avi okay and we see some errors here invalid seek to negative position can I open demuxer okay so we can see that that um, mencoder isn't going to be able to to fix this video on its own either the next piece of software I want to show you is uh, a lot like M Encoder, it's called FFmpeg. We'll give it our video file, our broken AVI video. But we'll tell it to copy the video stream, and we'll tell it to copy the audio stream. Oops. And we'll call the output video fix FFmpeg.avi. Okay, it's more errors. Broken AVI, invalid data found when processing. Okay, so FFmpeg isn't able to fix this broken AVI video either. So what we're going to need to do is in this case, um, as I was saying, this re this working reference video has some headers available in it that weren't written to the broken video. So what we need to do is transfer those headers over. So to do that we need a hex editor. I am using a hex editor called HXD, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, this particular hex editor is for Windows, and and it's a pretty good one, I think. I haven't found any really great cross-platform hex editors, but I'm sure there are some available specifically for each platform. So what we'll do is go ahead and open our broken and reference videos. And when we open the reference video, we see a lot of text over here on the right. This is, uh, you see this riff right here. I believe this is called the riff header. And we'll see in the broken AVI that there is no riff header. It didn't get didn't get written there. So, so in this case, the problem is that the uh, that the riff header, or part of the problem is the riff header didn't get didn't get written. So what we're gonna do is we're going to scroll down in this broken video until we find until we find some text and we'll see we come to this 00, zero db and, and there should be a little part right above that 00, zero db that's that says movie this is the the movie chunk i believe it's called so we're so we're missing that little movie part as well so we're going to scroll down in the reference video until we come to a similar part that there's the movie header and we we'll see the 00, zero db just like we saw in the broken AVI video. So so everything above the 0, d zero db 00, zero db appears to be what wasn't written in the broken video file. So what we're going to need to do is is um, take everything that's before that 00, zero db and copy it over to the broken video. So go ahead and select everything before that all the way to the top. We will copy it and go over to our broken video, select everything before the 00, zero db. And we will paste into that. And in different situations um, there will be different parts that are left out so you may need to copy uh, we need to look for different text. So we've pasted all that into there and we're going to save it as a new video. Call it edited and .avi. Got to put the .avi in there. Go ahead and save it and it'll save it as our new video. Okay, now we've created an edited AVI video that has the correct headers in it now, but uh, it may or may not play correctly still. So if we open this we'll see if we're going to be able to to play it. 
Okay, so Windows Media Player still can't still can't play it, even though it has the correct headers. And we'll try VLC and see what happens. Okay, VLC recognizes it as broken, but it gives you an option to repair it. So if we hit repair, we'll see VLC will be able to play it. However, this doesn't permanently repair the video. So we need to use a different tool to fix it. So what's happening is um, we've got the correct headers now, but there's something wrong with the index, I guess it's called. So what we need to do is re-index this, this video. And you'll see that we'll see that these tools that that I've demonstrated have the ability to re-index this this video. They don't they obviously don't have the ability to to recreate the headers, but we can re-index them. So we'll try virtual dub. And we'll just go ahead and open the video file directly. The edited video, our new edited video. And we see some errors or some corrections that, that Virtual Dub made. Um, this this third error, keyframe flag reconstruction was not specified. So um, so we can get uh, now. I've I've went ahead and and I, we can probably just go ahead and save it as new AVI right now. It would probably work. But I want to go ahead and open it with the advanced options, the extended options. And here at the top it says rederive keyframe flags. We'll go ahead and check that. We'll hit OK. And it says rekeying video stream. We'll give it a minute. Okay, see some warnings. Uh, these are a couple of errors that Virtual Dub was able to fix, and we don't see the third error. We went ahead and fixed that with the um, with that uh, that option. We rekeyed it, I guess it's called. Okay, so here we see a preview of our video. So we can see that Virtual Dub has opened it and appears to be working. So what we want to do now is we want to make a copy of this video. So we'll go to video and we'll make sure that direct stream copy is selected. And the same thing for audio, direct stream copy. We don't want to re-encode it. We just want to make a copy. And we'll save it as new video. And we'll call this fix virtual dub. Okay. Let's close this video. And now we will test our new video, the Virtual Dub, and we see that it is in fact working. So Virtual Dub was able to to uh, re-index this video after uh, we transferred the headers over to it.